everyone and welcome to your fourth grade virtual field trip. My name is Brittany and my nature name is Timberdoodle. I work for Jefferson County Conservation and today for our virtual field trip, we are going to study one of my all time favorite things, geology or the study of our earth. I love to look at rocks and fossils and that's why I love geology so much. We're gonna have a great time on the virtual field trip today. The first thing we're gonna do is study the three different types of rocks, and then we're going to go on a adventure to Lacey Kiyosakwa State Park, where you are gonna become a geologist. We're gonna do a field study and see if you can help me identify some different things about the areas we go to. It's going to be great. To learn more about geology, we need to study the three different types of rocks. The first type of rock that we're gonna study is sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock is formed by two different forces, cementing and compacting. So for our experiment today, we are going to kind of look into sedimentary rock a little bit more. We're gonna need our imagination. We're gonna say that this bread right here is big chunks of rock. Maybe it's a mountain or a big boulder, anything that's this big chunk of rock. And what sedimentary rock does is it recycles. It takes broken small pieces of other types of rock and it forms it together into something new. So for our experiment today, I am going to take this bread and make a mess. I am going to take this bread and tear it into a bunch of pieces. This is me acting like erosion. So I get to be erosion and I get to tear apart this big chunk of mountain. Now erosion can look like lots of different things. It could be wind, water, or even glaciers. So all of these things like glaciers, wind, or water attack the rock and it breaks it up into little pieces. So, here I go. I am erosion breaking down this big chunk of rock. As I'm breaking up this rock, I'm trying to break it into as many small little pieces as I can. Sometimes erosion isn't even. So sometimes it will break things up into big chunks and other times it will break it up into smaller fine pieces. You can think about when you're in a creek. Sometimes when you're in a creek, you find some pretty big rocks. Other times you find sand. That's the water's job of breaking down some of those rocks into the sand, really small pieces, or the bigger rocks, bigger chunks. So as I'm getting done here, I have taken all the mountain pieces, all the big chunks of bread, and I broke them down into really small pieces here. I've acted like erosion. I've taken something big like a mountain, and over a long, long period of time, I've broke it down into something much smaller. That's a good example of two different types of mountains that we have here in America. We have the Appalachian Mountains, which are really, really old. And you can see here, they, they are so old that they are beginning to get kind of flat and rounded on the top. Then we have the Rocky Mountains. And if you look at the Rocky Mountains, they are still sharp and jagged. They are much younger. The erosion has not worked on them as long as it has on the Appalachian Mountains. So you can tell the age of mountains in some ways by how sharp and jagged, those are young, or how uh, smooth and kind of flattened they are, those would be a little bit older. So in our experiment today, we have broke down these mountains. It's taken a long time to make all these little pieces of rocks and sand. But now we're going to become a river. And the river uses gravity and water to help kind of collect all of these um, bits of pieces of smaller rock together. So we have all of our bread, I mean our rock on here, and we are going to collect it as a river. And it's gonna kind of end up in this collection pot right down here. Now, something that happened partially through is we're gonna pretend this cow is like a dinosaur, we'll say. 
okay? So partially through, this dinosaur uh, died and it got um, kind of pushed down by the river and it got collected with all the other rocks, okay? So in our experiment, now we have all these little pieces of rock. They're gathered together and they're in a river. So the river would have a little bit of water with it as well. This is where the cementing comes in. So if I were to pour a little bit of water in here, we have our pieces of rock and our water. And now over time, more and more layers of rock are getting put on top. And you can see that they're getting compacted. They're getting smashed together. So a little bit of water is that cementing and the, the pressure from all the other layers of rock is that compaction. So we see that all of these little chunks of rock are getting cemented and compacted together. And this would just keep happening over time. And over time, now you have a big chunk of rock. So this has now formed instead of all these little pieces, now it's been cemented or compacted together to make a new type of rock. And this is how sedimentary rock is formed. Now, just like that cow, I mean dinosaur, that was put in here, our sedimentary rock can have fossils. So if we look right here, sometimes when rivers start down cutting or breaking apart, you can see right there is where our cow dinosaur is. And that would be an example of a fossil. If the bones um, or teeth or any part of this dinosaur would get fossilized, that means the bones would be replaced with, it would go from bones to actual rock, that would become a fossil. And here, behind me, is a really good example of a fossil that, um, that I have found inside a sedimentary rock. So if you look here, this is just a really cool sedimentary rock that I found um, along a river. But when it opened up, you can see that there's actually a fossil. You can see the two sides of the fossil inside this rock. It's really pretty cool. So this fossil is found in a sedimentary rock. Awesome. Here are some other examples of fossils that you might see here in Iowa. These are pretty common fossils. We have the crinoid. These look like SpaghettiOs. Sometimes the hole in the middle is missing and it almost looks like you could make a necklace out of it. This is our state fossil, the crinoid. One of my favorites, the brachiopod. These look like little winged uh, clam shells or mussel shells. So these are really cool fossils to find as well. And last but not least, doo -doo -doo, the horn coral. It kind of looks like a horn that you would blow into but this is a horn coral that we would find here um, in Iowa a long, long time ago. So fossils are awesome. Have you ever heard of the Grand Canyon? The Grand Canyon is an amazing place. And when you are hiking down into the Grand Canyon or looking down, you can see the different layers of rock that are there. So for example, our rock that we made from the bread if this were to keep happening, layers and layers and layers of rock would keep getting piled on top of this. Now this is really important as we go into our field study. So I want you to have a really good understanding of how rock layers are formed. The great thing about rocks is that they're kind of like dog piles. Okay, so normally for this experiment, we have a bunch of students come up and we do a dog pile, but obviously we can't do that because we're virtual and that's not proper social distancing. So thankfully my daughter has some Barbies that we're gonna use to show you and teach you a little bit more about these layers of rocks. So, okay, let's say we have Princess Barbie. She lays down, she's on the bottom of the dog pile. Then comes Anna, she lays down next. She's next up on the dog pile. Denim jumper Barbie, she's next on the dog pile here. And then last but not least is pink Barbie with black leggings. Okay, 
Now, you didn't need to be here to see and know what order these uh, Barbies were put down in because you can just look at them and tell, right? You know that the first Barbie that laid down was Princess Barbie because she's on the bottom. And you know the last one to lay down was Pink Barbie with leggings because she's on top. Same thing with layers of rock. So if we look at this, you can see here that we have a dog pile of rocks. On the very bottom, we have layer A. That has to be the oldest layer of rock. It was put down first. So on your worksheet, next to number one, I want you to write A, because as you're looking at this, you can see that A is on the bottom. It was put down first. Then after A was put down, the blue layer, B, comes and it is put down. So now we have another layer of rock. A is the oldest and B is a little bit younger. Then we have layer C up here, this top layer of yellow rock. That was put down next. So that should be third on your list. And the last thing to happen would be zoop, something like this, where our plate tectonics or the forces of the earth make the ground move. And so at first it was this nice, pretty picture, but then we had some uplift. And we're gonna say that this line that you see here that makes it look not straight anymore, that is letter D. So that should be the last thing on your list. If that were to happen first, then your yellow layer would have kind of a nice um, line up here and it would be all filled in and flat up here. But C, B, and A are all broke, not in the right um, lines anymore, so we know that D happened last. Okay, this was a fairly easy example of the layers of rock. We're going to go into one that's a little bit trickier, and then our last one is a challenge one. Let's see how well you do. I'm gonna give you some time to look at the chart right here and tell me what you think so look at this chart and try and figure out what rock layers were put down in what order good luck As you look at these layers of rock, if you said N, this bottom layer is the oldest, you are correct. After layer N was put down, then came layer X. After X was layer Z. After layer Z was layer C. After layer C was layer G. After all of that was done, and all of these layers of rocks were put down, then water came through, erosion, and that made letter Q, this canyon. So if you said N, X, Z, C, G, Q, you are correct. Layer Q had to be last because it had to cut down through layer G, C, Z, X, and into N. Good job. Are you ready for the next one? We need you to figure out which order these letters happened in. This one is tricky, so take your time. For number three, if you said letter T is the oldest, you are correct. 
After T came letter R, then J, then D. After these four layers were laid down, something different happened. You can see that they at one point were lined up, but now they aren't anymore. So after they were all put down in that order, then came letter S. Letter S happened when this layer moved up or this layer moved down. After letter S came letter A. You know this because this is flat along the top and kind of filled in the difference between the two different heights of those layers. After A was done being put down, then came this little lava flow thing, letter M. It had to come through all of these different layers, so it had to be after them. And our last letter or layer to be laid down was is letter Y. So if you said T, R, J, D, S, A, M, Y, you are correct. That was a tricky one. Sedimentary rock is one of the three types of rock. And it's really useful and has been very important to the history of our state. Chert or flint is a type of sedimentary rock and that's what's used to make arrowheads or different scrapers and stone tools that were used a lot here in Iowa before European settlement. Also, you can use chert to start a fire. So chert is harder than steel and if you take steel and you find the right angle, you can see that sparks fly. Pretty cool. So chert is a type of sedimentary rock and has always been really important here in our state of Iowa. Okay, well that about wraps up our sedimentary rocks. So sedimentary rocks are one of the three types of rocks. On your worksheet, you should have that section complete. So that would be the first three questions with your rock layer sequencing. And then also the last question that says, what two forces are used to make sedimentary rock? Don't forget to use your word bank below to help you with your spelling, or if maybe you forgot either of the two forces that are used to make sedimentary rock. Okay, the next type of rock is metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rock is made when there are already two or more types of rocks that already exist and they are put under heat and pressure. And between heat and pressure, they change that rock into a new rock. So sometimes it looks like taking those rocks and smooshing them together and kind of melting them together and changing them into a new rock. And sometimes it's just one type of rock that's put under heat and pressure and that changes it. Today, to help you remember metamorphic rock, I'm going to do an experiment. If you have two starbursts at home or in the classroom, then you can follow along with this activity. If you don't, that's just fine. You can still watch. But if you have two starbursts, they need to be two different colors. The first thing that you're gonna do is unwrap these uh, starbursts very, very carefully. You want to take this wrapper off so that it does not rip, okay? After you've taken that off, put your starburst on top and then do the next one. Now I'm gonna pause a little bit to give you guys a chance if you're following along with starburst to get yours unwrapped. And in order to um, continue to the next part, both of your starburst, both of your starburst should be sitting on your wrapper on your desk, just like that. Before we start our experiment, I want you to take your hands and rub them together like this. Now, as you do that, you're creating friction and inside your hands, you should be feeling some warmth, right? Your hands are getting a little bit warmer, okay? 
For our experiment today, remember we need both heat and pressure. So warm your hands up a little bit if you have your starbursts. And then you're going to make a starburst sandwich, okay? You're going to put the wrapper on the bottom by your hand with a starburst sitting on top. Then you're going to take your ne next starburst and stack it on the other one. And your last wrapper is gonna become the bread for the top, right? Okay, now we need to speed up time because in reality, to make metamorphic rock, it takes a long, long time. But we don't have that much time on our virtual field trip today. So you're going to take your two hands and we are gonna start speeding up time. We're gonna push your hands together and really try and smash that starburst, I mean those rocks, and really apply, apply a lot of pressure. And remember, in between your hands is some heat, right? So that's important. We've got the heat and the pressure. Now, sometimes during this experiment, students like to kind of push it on the table like that, and you can do that too. That's applying a little bit more pressure, and that's just fine. So keep doing this over a long, long period of time. And remember, we're speeding up time. So this is happening quickly for us, but in the real world, it takes a long, long time to make metamorphic rock. Okay, now we're gonna stop, okay? And we're gonna peel back the wrappers. And what you should see are two smashed starburst or two smashed rocks that I can't actually take apart. If I would try and get the two different starbursts or the two rocks apart, I can't anymore. They're mashed and they're molded into one type of rock now. So we took two different rocks, we put them under heat and pressure, and they formed a new rock. And that is how metamorphic rocks work. Now on your worksheet, you're going to follow along here and you're gonna complete the first question that says, what two forces are used to make metamorphic rock? So don't forget to use your word bank. And also, I want you to take the time to draw a before and after picture. So your before picture should look like the two starbursts sitting on top of each other before they had been smashed or altered by the heat and pressure. And the after, go ahead and draw how yours came out. So mine, my picture would look like two rocks, uh, two starbursts smashed together. All right, go ahead and take time to complete that before we move on to the next section. Our third and final type of rock is igneous rock. And when I think igneous rock, I think volcanoes. So we're gonna do an experiment today to help you remember what igneous rock is and help you lock that away in your brain. So igneous rock first starts out as either magma or lava. So it's kind of this liquidy substance that's moving around in our earth and it either stays in our earth and cools down or it explodes out of a volcano and it cools down when it hits the air. So scientists or geologists kind of have to do some different classifications on igneous rock, on the lava or magma. And they do this by using a really big word called viscosity. Now viscosity is actually pretty simple. It's just how runny something is. And how runny something is depends on what type of volcano it's gonna make. So remember, viscosity is simply how runny the liquid is, okay? So if you have a really runny liquid, what type of volcano shape would it form? Versus if you had something that wasn't very runny, what type of volcano would that form? That's what you're gonna be filling out on your worksheet, but our experiments today are gonna to help kind of demonstrate that. So we're gonna start off with scenario number one. Okay, our first scenario, we are going to use water. So I have a water bottle here with water in it, and I'm gonna pour it into the top of the volcano. 
Now, you're going to see how quickly or slowly it runs down the side. Okay, here we go. You can kind of see that it runs pretty quickly down the edge of the volcano. Okay, now keep that in your mind. That water ran pretty quickly down the side of the volcano. Okay, let's move on to our next scenario. Scenario number two, we have one of my favorite things to put on things, syrup. Okay, so we're gonna put syrup into the volcano top and we're gonna look and watch it, see how runny it is, okay? Hmm. Okay, so you saw how runny this syrup was. Keep that in your mind as we go on to our third scenario. We have pudding. Okay, we're gonna see how runny pudding is. So if, if we had magma or lava that was like this pudding, how would it flow out of the volcano? Here we go, we're about to find out. Hmm. Okay, so we've had three different um, substances that we've put in our volcano. We had water, syrup, and pudding. Of those three, which ones are you going to use on your worksheet here? So on your worksheet, you'll see we have high viscosity pudding, we have meeting, medium viscosity syrup, and low viscosity water. Now each of those, I want you to draw a line and match it to the volcano type that you think it would form. So if you only had really, really watery um, magma or lava, what type of volcano would it form? It was really, really runny and it would spread out a lot. Which of those volcanoes on your worksheet looks really spread out? If you drew a line to the shield volcano, you are correct. The syrup. Now, if that one was kind of in the middle, right? So it was a little bit um, harder, it didn't run out as quickly as the water, but not as much as the pudding. So which one would that be? If you drew a line to the cinder volcano, you are correct. And last but not least, the pudding. That one was the hardest. It had the trickiest time. It was the slowest as it was running down the side of our, of our volcano here. And that one, you should draw a line to the composite volcano. So on the composite volcano, if you had magma that was like the pudding, it would start cooling before it would even get to the base sometimes. And so that would make for really steep edges compared to the water that's really runny and it would spread out really quickly before it would dry into hard rock. So the viscosity, how runny something is, helps determine what the volcano shape is going to be. So that wraps up our igneous rock. So when you think of igneous rock, I hope that you think of volcanoes and our cool experiment. At this point, we have covered all the three types of rocks, sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous rock. And you should have the front side of your worksheet complete. We'll pause for a little bit to give you time to finish that side of the worksheet if you haven't already. Now that you've completed the front side of the worksheet, it's time to flip it over to the back side. This is the portion of the field trip where we will be going on a virtual field trip to Lacey Kiyosakwa State Park. I've picked out two different sites within the state park that we are going to study as you become a geologist. It's really important that we complete the first, the top part of the worksheet before we get into the two different sites. So on the top portion of the worksheet, you'll see two different types of rocks. One is called limestone, and one is called sandstone. You will need to use the word bank to match to these two types of rocks the things that describe them. 
So listen closely as I tell you the answers. Limestone is a really hard rock. Well, as far as sedimentary rocks go, it's hard compared to the other one. Limestone also has fossils in it. When limestone was formed, it's typically in a very shallow sea and you can think of it um, kind of like modern day coral reefs. Think of the movie Finding Nemo. So all of these coral reefs have been broken up over time and the coral um, falls to the bottom and that is what makes limestone. So limestone of the two is hard, has fossils in it, and is from a coral reef setting. Sandstone is much, much softer. So of the two, it's a much softer rock and we're gonna say for our field study today that it was formed mostly in a beach-like environment. So sandstone is soft and from a beach-like environment. Make sure you use your word bank to help you fill out the limestone and sandstone portions because you will need this as we continue our site study. In the next couple clips, you'll see me at the different sites that we are going to visit today. Now it's important that you watch and listen to the clues that I give you. Don't worry about filling out the worksheet as I'm talking. There'll be plenty of time for you to do that later. Also, don't get distracted if you can see my kids in the background. I did bring them along for this virtual field trip. Okay, we are going to head to Lacey Kiyosakwa State Park to the CCC Quarry. Here we go. We are here at site number one. This is the quarry here at Lacey Kiyosakwa State Park. And you'll have several questions on your worksheet that you need to answer. But I wanna give you a little bit of information about this site uh, before you complete your worksheet. So this was an area that the CCC used to quarry or take out a lot of different rocks that are used throughout the park to build some of the different buildings and bridges. So this was not natural. This quarry was man-made. They used uh, dynamite or explosives to um, take different layers of the rock down. And actually, if you ever have the chance to come to this site, you can see where some of their bore holes were, or these like circular tubes that go down into the rocks where they placed the dynamite and blew the rocks um, off of this area. So knowing that information, um, you will have several things that you're going to uh, answer for site one at the quarry. But it is important to remember that the quarry right up, uh, at the top up here, this is the, the highest, uh, a very high point in the area. So when you're looking at your uh, rock map, you know that this is toward the top and that this is really hard, hard rock. Okay, those are two clues to help you out. Good luck. Did you pick up on all of those clues? You might have noticed that I was toward the top or the highest point in what you will see as your rock chart on your worksheet. Also, this was a very hard rock that had fossils in it. These are all great clues to help you complete your site one information. Good luck. Okay, we're here at site number two at Lacey Kiyosakwa State Park. We're down here in Wesley Creek. And one of the things that's very interesting about this site is that you can start to see some of the layering right here behind me. So way up top here, we have some limestone, the really, really hard rock. And then down here, we start moving into something that feels a lot more like sand, sandstone. So that should be a kind of a clue for you on your worksheet, you can see on the rock um, profile there where where I might be kind of standing here um, with the sandstone being right here, all this crumbly stuff, and then up higher, the limestone. So go ahead and fill out your worksheet knowing that I'm at site two. I'm down here in Wesley Creek. We got the limestone, the hard rock up top, but now I'm down here and I'm in the sandstone. 
So as you can see right here in this rock layer, everything is really crumbly and soft and the rocks just kind of break apart. So that's kind of a clue as to what type of rock we're dealing with here. Really soft, sandy feeling crumbly rock. Did you pick up on all those clues? It's important to remember that I was down in Wesley Creek and the rock that was exposed was very soft. Good luck. Thank you for joining us for our fourth grade geology virtual field trip. We learned about the three types of rocks, sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. Hopefully the experiments and demonstrations we did will help you to remember how those three types of rocks are formed. We also hope you enjoyed our virtual trip to Lacey Kiyosakwa State Park where you got to become a field geologist and complete the study. Thanks, have a great day.